Okay, in this video we're going to show how we can create a quadratic equation from three points, neither of which is the vertex, y-intercept, or x-intercept. Because in previous uh, lessons where we've come to create a quadratic equation to model a situation, we've been given information about the vertex, like, you know, the maximum height is this at a certain point in time, or we've at least been given information about where the y-intercept is, or we know where the roots are, so we can kind of plug in another point and solve for that a-value. Uh, but today we're just going to look at a problem where all you have is three points that are on the parabola, none of which are those key points, and we're being asked to try and find an equation in standard form. So this is our problem. So what we have is a model rocket is being fired into the air from a platform. The height of the rocket is modeled by a quadratic function where H represents the height of the rocket in meters and T represents the time since the rocket was fired in seconds. The height of the rocket is measured at certain times during its flight. After one second, it's at a height of 36 meters. After three seconds, it is at a height of 76 meters. And after six seconds, it is at a height of 61 meters. Using the above information, find the quadratic equation in standard form for the height of the rocket over time. Then find the maximum height of the rocket. So a couple key points here. None of those points that we've been given, the pieces of information, are indicating the vertex or even the y-intercept, right? The fact that it's saying that it's fired from a platform implies that it's not being fired from the ground, so its initial height is not going to be zero. It's going to be something a little bit bigger than that. So we can't assume that the y-intercept is zero, okay? And we have been asked to find it in standard form, okay? And they've been given us variables of h and t. So essentially what we have here is in standard form, h is going to equal a t squared plus b t plus c, right? Where we're just substituting the variable of t instead of x. But you could easily do this using y and x instead, right? So I mean, if you wanted to see that, you could instead think of it like this. Right, but x is just representing time, and y is height. Okay, so what we have is essentially three coordinate points, right? We have three times with their uh, associated heights. So what we have is at a height of one, time of one second, we have a height of 36, so there's our first coordinate point. Then we have at a height, after three seconds, we're at a height of 76 meters. And our third point is that after six seconds, we are at a height of 61. So the fact that our height has actually gone down between, seven, or between three seconds and six seconds seems to imply that our vertex is probably going to be somewhere between three and six, right? But that's just an educated guess. We don't know that for sure, okay? Um, so what we're going to do next is basically create three different equations using those three coordinate points. And we're just going to number those equations 1, 2, and 3. So using this first coordinate point of 136, we're going to substitute the 36 in for h and substitute the 1 in for t. So that now becomes 36 is equal to a times 1 squared plus b times 1 plus c. And we can simplify that equation because right, 1 squared is just 1, 1 times a will just be a, b times 1 is just going to be b, and then c. So our first equation is given by 36 is equal to a plus b plus c. Okay? Our second equation will use this coordinate point of 376. Right, so we'll label that number 2. Okay? And again, we substitute the height value of 76, and then the 3 will go in for t. Right? So a times 3 squared plus b times 3 plus c. Again, we can simplify that. 3 squared will be 9, and 9 times a will be 9a. b times 3 can be rewritten as 3b, and then we have plus c. So there's our second equation. Okay, and our third equation, we'll use our third coordinate point here of 6 and 61. Right, so again, we substitute 61 in for the height. a times the t value of 6 squared plus b times 6 plus c. And again, we'll just simplify that equation. So 61 is equal to 6 squared is 36. 36 times a is just 36a. 6 times b is 6b, and then plus c. Okay. So here we have three equations with three unknown variables that we need to solve for. Okay. So if you're trying to solve for three unknowns, you need three equations. If you're just trying to solve for two unknowns, you need two equations. 
So what we're going to do at this point is try and get this to look a little bit more familiar to just a basic substitution or elimination problem that we're more familiar with in just two variables. And we're going to do that by eliminating one of our variables. And the easiest one to eliminate here is C. Right? So the first thing I'm going to do is subtract equation 1 from equation 2. Okay, so I'm going to subtract equation 1 and equation 2. All right, so basically what I have here is equation 2, which is 76, is equal to 9a plus 3b plus c, and I'm going to subtract the entire equation 1, which is 36, is equal to a plus b plus c. Okay, and I've put that in brackets to make sure, remember, we're subtracting every term. And then just subtract it down. So 76 minus 36, that's just going to give you 40. 9a minus a is going to be 8a, 3b minus b will be 2b, and your c's will actually be eliminated. All right, so now we have a fourth equation that we've created. 40 is equal to 8a plus 4b, and I'm just going to label that one equation 4. Okay? Now, using two different equations, so I already did one with equations, I subtracted equation 1 and equation 2. I'm going to eliminate the same variable. So again, I'm going to try and eliminate C. It's the easiest one to get rid of through subtraction. But I'm going to pick two different ones. Okay? I'm going to pick 1 and 3, but you could easily pick 2 and 3 as well. Okay? So again, I pick two different equations to eliminate the same variable. So I'm going to subtract 1 and 3. Right? So again, I start with equation 3. 61 is equal to 36A plus 6B plus C. And I am subtracting the entire equation, number 1, which is 36, is equal to a plus b plus c. Right? And remember, in order to subtract these types of equations, you have to be able to line it up so that it looks the exact same. Right? Constant equals a plus b plus c in order to be able to do this. Right, so now our 61 minus 36 gives us 25. 36a minus 1a gives us 35a. 6b minus 1b is... 5b and c minus c is 0. And we're going to call this equation 5. So now what we've got is if we just use equation 4 and 5, we simply have two equations with two unknowns, linear, right? So a and b are only two variables. So what we can do now is use our other substitution elimination strategy to do that. So we'll do that on the next page. So again, here was equation 4. Okay, equation 4 was our 40 is equal to 8a plus 2b, okay? And our equation 5 was 25 is equal to 35a plus 5b. All right, now looking at equation 4, it's actually quite simple to isolate b because all of those coefficients are divisible by 2. So I'm going to subtract 8a from both sides. So 40 minus 8a is equal to 2b. And I'm going to divide everything by 2. So 40 divided by 2 will be 20. 8a divided by 2 will be that minus 4a. And then that will just equal b. All right. So now that I have b isolated, I can substitute that into equation 5. Right? So this expression for b can be substituted in over here. So then what I have is 25 is equal to 35a plus 5 times 20 minus 4a. Now I have an equation only dealing with the variable a. So expand and simplify. 25 is equal to 35a plus 5 times 20, which is 100, minus 5 times 4, so minus 20a. All right, so combine like terms. I can subtract that 100 from both sides and get negative 75 here on the left, and 35a minus 20a gives me a positive 15a. Divide both sides by 15, and you get negative 5 is equal to a. I have now solved for one of my variables. a is equal to negative 5. Everything from here just becomes an easier substitution, because we already have an, ex an equation here that solves for b. So we just have to take our a value and substitute it in here. So 20 minus 4 times what we solved for a, which is negative 5. That's going to equal b. So 20 minus negative 20, so that's 40 is equal to b, All right? So now I have my a value and my b value, and if you recall back to equation 1, in our first equation what we had was 36 was equal to a plus b plus c, All right? And now I know values for both a and b, so 36 now equals negative 5 
plus 40 plus C, so 36, is equal to 35 plus 1, meaning that our value for C is in fact equal to 1. Right, so we've now solved for all three variables. So our equation in standard form now is the height of the rocket in terms of time is height is equal to negative 5t squared plus 40t plus 1. All right, so that means that our height of the platform was 1 meter. The initial height of the platform from which it was fired is that 1 meter, and there's our standard form equation. Right? At this point, we can now solve the part of the question that asks for the maximum height of the rocket. That just means what we need to find is the vertex. Okay, so what we need to do there is just use our equation. Right, we'll rewrite it again. Negative 5t squared plus 40t plus 1. If we're trying to find the vertex, we can use our negative b over 2a formula, right? So the t coordinate will be the negative 40 over 2 times the a value, which is negative 5. So that's negative 40, oh, negative 40 over negative 10. So our t value is going to be 4, which means the maximum height of the vertex, or the maximum height of the rocket happens after 4 seconds. So that initial guess of happening between 3 and 6 seconds was correct. Uh, but that's just the time, right? So it, it happens after 4 seconds, but the height, and then we'll just plug in that value of t into our, our equation that we found. So negative 5 times 4 squared plus 40 times 4 plus 1. h is going to equal negative 5 times 16 plus 160 plus 1, which is going to equal negative 80, plus 160 plus 1, and then you're just adding, and we get a height of 81 meters. Okay, so we found our equation, and we've been able to conclude that the maximum height of the rocket, the model rocket, I should say, the model rocket is 81 meters, and we can specify, and it occurs four seconds after being fired. All right, so that's how we can set up uh, a quadratic equation when we are just given three points. So essentially, just to recap there, we create, we use each of our coordinate points to create three different equations, right? Using one, two, and three coordinate points, we set up three different equations using our x and y coordinates, or h and t coordinates, uh, we plug them in, right? Giving us three different equations, all in terms of a, b, and c, the variables we're trying to find. We then eliminate one of the variables, so in this case, it was easiest to eliminate C. It didn't matter which one you chose to do, but when you do eliminate one of the variables, we have to use two different equations, right? So in this first one, I chose one and two, and in the second one, I chose one and three, right? You can't use one and two twice because it just gives you the exact same equation, right? So I used one and two, one and three. That gave me two other equations, right? In this case, four and five, and those equations then can just be solved using our uh, elimination and, or substitution strategies that we've seen before. Okay, I chose to do substitution, but you could choose to do elimination if that is what you feel more comfortable with. All right, and then that creates your quadratic equation.